What's up, small ball gang? And welcome back to Coffee Time. It's Sunday. Hooray! Thanks for the mug one that's been more gaming. I've had to re-record this intro because I did have another intro, but lots of things have changed and people have had an opinion and most of the time it was a bad one. <laughs> So this video was supposed to come out today, so we're still going to release it today, but it was supposed to be before our 9th edition content. We were supposed to drop our 9th edition content tomorrow, so it might seem like it's a little bit out of order, and I know I could be talking about the new rulebook now, but I've recorded this video and I really wanted to get it out before we started like really diving into 9th edition. So if you want to see more 9th edition content, there's going to be an unboxing video hopefully tomorrow, and then a new battle report for small board gang primary members as well as on Hellstone Premium, well, hellstonewargame.co.uk. So today I sat down with Innis, who went with me for our top eight worst units in eighth edition video and we review the top eight most infamous most game-changing tournament lists from eighth edition as well so this video we kind of rank them of how much or how little the game changed around this sort of list with lots of like crucial mentions of really specific big ones but yeah it's a good laugh so i do hope you enjoyed this video and this video is also sponsored by us <laughs> Do you like the look of this t-shirt? It's nice, right? It's cool. What if it had a cool a cool graphic that wasn't the logo right there? What if you wanted to prove your loyalty to Small Board Gang? To your Small Board Gang King. The victory! Oh, Small Board Gang! Well, now you can. We have a brand new t-shirt that's coming out that is limited edition. A lot of you might remember our old brother t-shirt, which was the Iron Hands related t-shirt. But now we have a brand new t-shirt, which is also going to be limited edition and run in the same fashion. So go to the website, hellstormwargaming.co.uk slash shop today and get yourself one of these t-shirts. They are only going to be available for one month. And here's how it's going to work. You put your order in. We collect those orders. At the end of the month, we'll put the order together. We get all the t-shirts all at the same time. We ship those t-shirts to you, direct to your door, for a small fee, which is called postage and packaging. So it's like a pre-order, but it's also not. But you get your t-shirt at the end of the month, and that's what counts. So I'm currently waiting on a sample, but I'm really, really impressed with the t-shirt quality that I have seen from this company. So essentially, you put your order in now, you order it throughout the month, and then at the end of the month, we ship those t-shirts out to you. It's very similar to how other companies do it and how other YouTubes do it, but we're going to be running a lot of these t-shirts if they're successful, but they're all going to be limited edition. So join Small Board Gang. Wear the t-shirt with pride. We have a range of sizes from small to 5XL, so there's no excuse. Get yourself a t-shirt, and they're really cheap. They're cheaper than all the YouTubers that sell, also sell t-shirts. Literally, I did the market research, it's cheaper. Get yourself a t-shirt. Tom, superimpose it onto here, please. Look how cool it is. Get yourself one of these. Um, I'll post a proper one on the website as soon as we've got a picture of it, but yay. Order yourself a t-shirt now. I hope someone give it to Cody K slash shop. We're going to start with number eight. In the eighth place, we've probably got Razorwing Flocks. I think you've got the list handy, but it's basically how many Razorwing Flocks from the Dark Eldar credits going to put in a list around the Incarn. Yeah, so when Razorwing Flocks dropped, they were uh, seven points of model for four wounds, which as a rate is just kind of ridiculous when you can make them fearless with the Incarn, reroll hits and wounds with a Beastmaster, give them a six up feel no pain with the Incarn. Mm -hmm. And it was just in, in the early times where points were higher, guns were less efficient, except Bobby G, you just had less output and you couldn't get through that many bodies in time. It just kind of stood there and said, all right, I've got the Incarn, I've got some smites behind me, full powered doom that worked on everything in Jinx, or just smites and standard Yunari stuff like double firing with uh, Morgan Ra or Fugin as we like to do at the time which was just incredibly inefficient but very mm -hmm. funny. It just kind of sat there and said I have 300, 400 wounds on this board. You don't have enough shots. <laughs> if you played this against like a modern list I don't think it goes well for the flocks. Probably not. But man was at the time it was just obnoxious because you just couldn't get through it. Like you can have 36 in a current list. This list had a hundred and a hundred and fifteen <laughs> because the fine cast as well and they're what like 10 pound a base or something like that to buy i'm trying not to think about it <laughs> i know at the etc how many players did you say probably had the razor wing flop there was like 30 teams i reckon 20 15 to 20 of them had this so really? there was a couple thousand razor wing flocks at the event <laughs> And I reckon maybe like four real ones. <laughs> Basically, early 8th edition was an absolute trip and we thought this list would be a good way to highlight some of the ridiculousness that happened. Pre-rule of three, but also before we kind of settled onto a meta. It was kind of like, how many models can I get on the board when my opponent literally can't kill me? Yeah, there was the uh, the 200 gun drone list. That was yeah. fun. 
So there you go. So in eighth place, is there anything else you want to say about Razor Wing Flocks before we move on? Screw this list. <laughs> Screw that list. Yeah, it was gross. So this list, it's 120 cultists. 160. There's two more in the oh, two yeah. more squads in the thousands oh, yeah. on the battalion. There's 160 cultists. 30 Zangors with Araman and Demon Prince to back them up. And then three units of 10 Pox Walkers, and it essentially relies on the Dead Walk Again stratagem. Which yeah. is a 1 CP stratagem that every time a model died in a unit within a certain range of the Pox Walkers, did the model itself didn't have to be in range, the unit just had to be, uh, you could add one Pox Walker to the Pox Walker squad, which was free. <laughs> and the... So if you notice the, the 190 other models that aren't Pox Walkers in this list... And only 30 Pox Walkers. <laughs> <laughs> so there were suddenly 190 Pox Walkers in the same squad. Yeah, and the fact the Death Card have access to Cloud of Flies as well, so you put the Pox Walkers in the middle, and then you use Cloud of Flies, so you can't target them unless they're the closest. And then there's like 160 cultists in front of them. <laughs> and then they're tough. Their toughness five, four because of Typhus. Yeah. Typhus can also put um, the Death Guard specific power Trescent Vitality on them to give them That's plus it, one strength yeah. and toughness. Mm -hmm. They get plus one to hit in big squads. This list had access to Prescience. They ignore morale naturally. They ignore morale naturally. They have a five up feel no pain naturally. Mm -hmm. Just no, <laughs> no. You <laughs> could easily have two or three hundred bottles in this squad. The limiting factor was how many you had in your case, not how many you could kill. <laughs> yeah, so. that only existed for a very brief period of time in between the Death Guard Codex and the Chaos Demons Codex, but it wasn't a fun period of time. It was not. So number six, we have Eldar Flyers. It is Yanari as well. Because there were sort of like three distinct periods of Yanari, weren't there? There was the original one where they could soul burst in your turn. Yeah. And we don't talk about that. No. And then there was sort of like the time after that where they could soul burst only in their turn. In the psychic phase. There, <laughs> in, the, but in the psychic phase. And then they got another hit where they sort of like just went up in points on everything. And then they got the index and they just went, no, you can just have the knife in the ribs. So this list in particular is the Yanari fly list that Alex Harrison made famous at the LVO which was probably stolen off someone else. I, pre I heard a story that Alex basically waited for this list to be delivered by people that he stole it from. <laughs> I mean, like, this list has been doing the rounds in the UK for months before that. I'm pretty sure Tony and Manny won and toed the LGT with it in 2019. So essentially it relies on Alatok Air Wings using Crimson Hunter Exarchs. Alatok, so they're minus two to hit over 12 inches because they're a flyer. And then obviously Alatok, if you're over 12, you're minus one to hit. And then it usually uses a Blackheart Air Wing as well. We're using Razor Wing Jet Fighters because they're really cheap and they give you access to Agents of Vex as well. So you can shut down anything your opponent's trying to do. This list in particular had a Yanari Yavrain uh, with two units of nine Wind Riders as well for double shooting horde clearance while the Crimson Hunter Exarts and Wraith Hemlock and Razor Wings did all the heavy lifting. Back when Yanari could still use all our stratagems for fire and fade as well. Yeah, exactly. So you would just pop the Wind Riders out, delete something and pop them back away. How do you feel about this list, Innes? It's probably my least favourite iteration of any list that's ever existed in 8th edition just because at least the other lists you got to play the game against a little bit. In this one, if you didn't bring specifically flyer killing stuff, you had no chance. Like uh, we're seeing a lot of changes in ninth edition based around like hit modifiers. And all that. A lot of them are centered around what this list represented. I'm glad this list existed because it got Eldar gutted, and that made me happy. Yeah. So great list, but very very obnoxious. <laughs> I mean, is you could probably make that the title of the video. <laughs> oh, that is a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> So this list in particular was Chaos. It was mostly demons with a little soup of Thousand Suns. And it's a very much a board control style list, which is a lot more what you'd kind of find in 8th edition today than you would 8th edition or days gone by. So it's based around 60 Plague Bearers with the supporting characters. We've got Change Caster and we've got the Demon Prince of Corn with the Skull Reaver, which is the pretty nasty axe relic as far as I'm aware. Yeah, the guy that you kind of had to have because... Knights were everywhere, and this guy reeled the wound against them and like killed a knight in a round of combat. Like, he was great at the time. And then you have a, like a small flavor, a small bomb of pink horrors and blood letters, and then like two demon princes, Araman, a sorcerer in Terminator armor, but also a Hellforge Contemptor with conversion beamers. Yeah, which uh, 
Jim definitely popularized this as way to sort of get your turn one kill and deny your opponent getting it, which was sort of how this list functioned, very much an ITC style list, yeah. where you would you would pick one thing and you would get rid of it, and they would kill nothing, and that was how you played the game back and forth. Yeah, this was the list that like couldn't physically lose to Tau because they hit it on sixes and just didn't have enough firepower mm -hmm. that you could just stand on all the objectives, kill one thing a turn, they killed nothing. It was it was certainly a tricksy list. Well, and also it's just it's just smite spam as well, isn't it? Because obviously because the thousand suns, they're not suffering the minus for casting smite, so it's just more wound and consistent psychic damage, which usually armies can't can either deal with or they do nothing about. So I think this probably contributed to the conga lining change that we've seen for unit coherency because we mentioned orc boys were definitely one part of it but plague bearers essentially used to just conga line from pox bringer from your sloppy two battle piper and the spoil pox scrivener if you're using that one and then essentially you just conga line out because you only need one model within range of these two characters to give them better leadership make them faster give them plus to hit give them all the extra attacks and cast powers on them and cast powers on them yeah as you add models to them when you roll a one for your morale you get when you get those d6 models back you can just spread them even further no this I list is probably the most fair of the ones that we've seen i'd say so, far, so yeah because I'd it just so. kind of does its thing if you had an answer to it you could still play a game and if you didn't have an answer to it you weren't like completely screwed like there were still ways to play around it yeah um it didn't just like it wasn't just the kind of list that all won it was very good in an itc grindy format where it only needed to win by a couple of points and then it was also being piloted by some really great players who just took the opportunities that you gave them and capitalized on it but as a list it wasn't like incredibly polarizing if you practiced against this and you planned for it you could beat it in fourth place we're going to talk about imperium for the first time I think this and is what an Imperium list it is. It's got all of the Imperium in the same list. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this list in particular is the Brigade-powered Castellan, where we basically... There was lots of flavours. There was a, a Blood Angel flavour. This one in particular, we're going to be talking about Brandon Grant's 2019 Nelvio winning Katachan Brigade powering a Castellan. And this list was just obnoxious. Again like every yeah. other list but this list essentially the he's got a house raven knight castellan which will be re-rolling all rolls of one because of the house raven stratagem and probably taking iron bulwark for one cp iron bulwark <laughs> and and the uh the calls wrath and then it'll be rotate iron shielding whenever it needs to for that sweet yeah. sweet storm shield yeah so essentially that the castellan was so with that three plus in one it was just so hard to kill and it was only yeah. it was 600 points which is an expensive unit, but for the amount of damage it could do when you is literally impenetrable was just crazy. Absolutely. Yeah, it was crazy. the fact that it was six hundred and four points. You would have to sink like two turns of your army into killing, and by that time it's killed all the stuff that kills the guardsmen, and then you could never win on the board control. That that was the obnoxious thing about it was that you either had to like ignore the castle for six turns and try and win without killing it, which was possible but like the least fun you'll have. Yeah. Or you had to like kill the castle quickly enough to have time to deal with the the 100 infantry and the hellhounds and the wyverns and it just didn't work it's probably the most like this looks like an army that, that we've had so far yeah because you you get this army it's gonna deploy 100 infantry some bulgarian and some tanks and there's a knight helping it makes sense it does yeah. i don't care it was broken <laughs> I think the main changes we saw up there was Iron Bulwark got nerfed to 4 plus max. Yep, Iron Bulwark nerfed to 4 plus max, the castle went up 100 points. So, this is Nick Nanabati's presents the LVO winning list, as he wrote on his actual list. And then he, and he and, wasn't and, wrong. And then he actually won it, yeah. So, yeah. this was using middle tier yanari i think so this was soul bursting only during your own turn yeah and that was broken enough yes it was so this relied on multiple battalions and spearheads of dark reapers and shining spears etc and then it relied on essentially wave serpents which are going to be minus one because they're a latox so you put all your dark reapers in there your shining spears are sam hand so they can advance and charge and then double move and advance and charge and then and then double shooting dark reapers that come out shoot twice and then disappear again with fire and fade yeah and uh, don't forget the shining spears would go in kill you and then run away because yes. that's how soul burst works <laughs> yes exactly so you could at this point you can only soul burst one type of soul burst per unit per turn in your yeah. own turn so you so. could only do one soul burst move action one soul burst shoot action one soul burst fight twice action yeah but that was enough so 
essentially this list it just it just yoloed shining spears at people that then ran away again and then shot twice with the dark reapers yeah. which was super <laughs> it was just basically nothing stood up to 32 strength 5 minus 2 2 damage shots with doom uh yeah, which exactly. you know doom sounds a lot like a stalker bolt rifle now that i think about it but... <laughs> <laughs> This Absolutely. list gave us the fly changes, pretty much. Like I think Shining Spears were directly responsible for that. Yeah. Shining Spears and Smash Captains were responsible for that. Mm. Uh, it gave us Dark Reaper points increases. It gave us Shining Spear points increases. Yeah. Uh, it gave us the Yanari Index in its entirety. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Wave Serpents went up in points. Farseers went up in points. Uh, Warlocks went up in points. Yeah, pretty uh, much. The Banshee's Mask went away. <laughs> Pretty much everything disappeared out of this list, but the main thing was is that Dark Reapers and Shining Spears like skyrocketed in, in points, and the Inari completely changed. Any closing thoughts on that list? I don't want to think about it more, so no. That's fair enough. So, runner-up to the most obnoxious list of 8th edition, we have Flyrant Spam. Oh, yep. what a wonderful, horrible time this, and this was. And this was runner-up at my insistence, because this is my personal favourite list of the eight, but we couldn't justify putting it first. <laughs> um, because I think this list this list is not only is one that I played and considered the best list that's ever existed in 8th edition, in mm -hmm. terms of how much fun it was, yeah. for me, not my opponent. Um, it also, I think, directly respond, correlates to the most rules changes that any list in the game ever has created other than maybe like kennel star in seventh so this this list essentially created the rule of three because at the same time there was the plague burst crawler spam which was doing the rounds but that wasn't quite as dominant as the hive tyrant spam yeah because everybody already had five hive tyrants from seventh edition nobody yeah. wanted to buy seven plague burst crawler yeah exactly so they were they're even the same loadout it was just like no change it was like remember that list that used to be really good well welcome back <laughs> just like ushering in like an old friend <laughs> uh, i've still got i've got seven in my box still and they're so waiting to come out i'm i'm hoping one day they break again uh, again this was before the five cp for a battalion and it wasn't long after the tyranny credits came out but essentially it has what this is matt roots adepticon 2018 list I mean, I could probably just tell you the list. Like, it's going to be seven Flyerants, four Morlocks, a couple of squads of Rippers for a battalion, and then, like, nine Mucolid Spores. Yeah, There exactly. is probably, like, one or two models different from that. It's the... All the Tyrants would be... No. Uh, <laughs> that Rending Claws and Twin Devourers. Yeah, and Toxin uh, Sacks. And Toxin Sacks. And then they're all Leviathan except one that's Kronos. Yep. Yep. And that, that's it. That's, that's the list. That's the list. You have to remember at the time... Deep Strike on turn one was not only possible but encouraged. Mm -hmm. Deep Strike was not dependent on the number of points or power level you had on the board, but purely the number of models or units. Units, yeah. So one mucolid and there goes were on the ground, how as many mucolids and ripper swarms as tyrants in this list. How funny! How Meaning bizarre. you could deploy three squads of rippers and eight mucolid spores on the board, yeah. and seven tyrants and four morlocks in reserve. Mm -hmm. Say to your opponent, you can have first turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you got kill one. <laughs> Very good. Uh, no, Euclids don't give kill one. Euclids <laughs> never give up victory points for being killed. <laughs> so, as a direct result of this list, we got Deep Strike on turn one, got changed to being only in your deployment zone, and then not at all. Yeah. Uh, got uh, points, Models in reserve got changed from being based on the number of units you had on the board to the number of power level you had on the board and then after that got changed to points because just one nerf wasn't enough for those two things they had to get nerfed a second time yeah exactly uh the rule of three was created <laughs> yeah this this list if you had rule of three it's one battalion i think <laughs> one, this one battalion list, this breaks it. can't exist under rule of three i've tried <laughs> uh, and then also because three nerfs weren't enough uh, Tarrants also went up 20 points. <laughs> <laughs> like, Tyrion as, as a whole, I haven't done anything since. This was this was the spotlight in 8th edition, which was the same this, spotlight this was, that they borrowed from 7th. They were <laughs> the best list in the game for, like, four months. Brilliant. We weren't sure if we were going to make this number one, but we thought it is that ridiculous that it kind of had to be. Yeah, so right. on the criteria of the list that were responsible for the most changes to the edition, I don't think this one hits the top five. Yeah. But if you're talking about, like, just sheerly for the brokenness level, this is number one. 
So this list is the Broviathan list, made famous by both Richard and John Lennon. But Richard... You don't have to mention John. Can you edit John out? <laughs> so essentially what this relies on is a, an indestructible Leviathan, who is usually your warlord with twin storm cannons. A, a special place in my heart for one of those Leviathans. Yeah, and indestructible is not like a buzzword here. And then Chaplain Dreadnoughts kind of sat behind them because they're characters with twin last cannons. They essentially just shoot the crap out of you while you're trying to deal with the Leviathan who can't be killed and he's also gunning the crap out of you. And then a lot of other tricks as well with like intercessors being Indomitus Crusaders. And then obviously the Cream of the La Creme, the Primaris Apothecary with Father of the Future. Yeah, and I am Father Ferris. <sighs> Yeah, and Iron Father Pharaoh, just to make sure that all your play bearers also have Stalker Bolt Rifles. So, essentially, the intercessors all have a 5 plus invulnerable save. And 9 Eliminators, in case you had fun with characters. <laughs> don't don't have characters. No, I am exactly. so sick of Eliminators, man. So <laughs> sick of Eliminators. So, all your, all your intercessors have, obviously have two wounds. They have Stalker Bolt Rifles, so at this point, they were re-rolling ones to hit, and my, minus 3 AP the entire time. The entire and then game. one was hitting on twos because of Pharaoh, and then one was hitting on twos because of the 17 litanies you had. They were yeah. plus one to wound and no oh, god yeah. i hate this list <laughs> yeah so they were so good at shooting you had a fine plus feel no pain as well and then i think the the power the power lock it was like armor lock off halo the armor lock was where the leviathan takes so much damage until it's at a point where you don't want it to take any more wounds and then because it was a character you could pass off the wounds to iron father pharos and then once iron father pharos has taken a few wounds but he's definitely not dead the, the Primaris Apothecary heals Iron Father Pharaoh, so then Iron Father Pharaoh heals the Leviathan. So every turn, nothing happens. Up to up to twice. Up to, up twice, to twice on each for one CP heals six. Yes. So Pharaoh heals twice. The heals heals the Leviathan twice, and then the Apothecary heals. Yeah. Uh, and then if Pharaoh needs twice. another turn to recover, we'll just use it on the Lieutenant instead. Then it's fine. And then the Leviathan also had, uh, well, the Dreadnoughts had reduced all damage by one as well. Yeah, Ironstone. Oh. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you were Ironstoning on that Venerable Dreadnought. So, like, in the finals, Brad Chester pumped 10 Assault Centurions, a couple of squads of Scouts, Snipers, a couple of squads of Eliminators, I think, and then also five Grav Centurions with rerolls to wound and damage from the Grav Amplification Stratagem. And I think he did, like, eight damage. So, yeah, I'm glad this list was as broken as it was because it made the game better afterwards. I hate almost all of these lists. I'm glad they're all dead. Except you, Flyers. I love you. But man, 8th edition has come a long way, hasn't it? So guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. It's really fun to like look back at the old lists that were dominating at one point and everyone moaned about and now you most people don't even remember them or you like think back and you're like oh my god people actually did that like razor wing flocks like oh my god people actually did that but what a crazy three years it's been but i'm super excited to roll out some ninth edition and i'm sure in the next three months there's going to be some very interesting combos that arise join the small board gang if you can if you want to if you want to support the channel further we've got patreon we've got health and wargaming at K, and we do have the small board gang which is a membership which you can click join down below everyone who is a, a small board gang member and and everyone who is a premium member and who is part of Patreon will all be entered into a free giveaway for two Indomitus box sets. So if you are interested in that, then consider supporting the channel. Also, if you bought one of the small ball gang t-shirts, which hopefully are out now, you'll also get entries there. So you get two entries if you part of the website, two entries if you bought a t-shirt, two entries if you're a Primaris member of Small Ball Gang, and one entry for every other one. It's all cumulative, so if you do everything, then you get all the entries. But otherwise, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Please subscribe if you can. Have a great day. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.